Hello, everyone, and welcome to Journey in Cybersecurity with Infobox. Today, I'm going to be walking you through some high-level cybersecurity and compliance topics and what those topics look like with Infobox and your security control stack. My name is Matt Fryer, and in my early years, I served as a security project and program manager. I've also led global security operations centers, stretching across a broad security control stack, and I'm a former CISO with direct experience from the public and private sectors for both security and compliance. In a short walkthrough, I'm going to review compliance frameworks and standards and how Infoblox plays a role in compliance and what Infoblox can do to create some efficiencies or possibly directly solve some of those compliance standards you may be struggling with. At a high level, we're going to touch on the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, or CSF. A quick highlight of CSF, and then we're going to dive quickly into how Infoblox can help mature your NIST CSF strategies. I'll also spend a few minutes on the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, or better known as FedRAMP. We'll touch on our authorization and what does that actually mean to our customers. And lastly, I'll touch on ISO 27001. Now, we're not gonna dive into the entire ISO standard, that would take too much time. So what we're gonna do is focus directly on asset management, what it means and how Infoblox plays a part in adherence and possibly creating some efficiencies. Now, for the most part, every organization and route to security maturity turns to guidelines to build a program that reduces risk. As a security practitioner and strategist, we like to say we manage risks. However, our ultimate goal is to reduce risk. Almost every organization in some way, shape, or form uses NIST CSF to start the ball rolling on becoming more mature and more secure. Now, what is NIST CSF? In short, it's a set of guidelines for mitigating risk. So understanding how your security technologies, processes, and policies map to these guidelines will help bring maturity to your information security program and considerably reduce your risk. Now, the parts of CSF that we're going to focus on are going to be the identify, protect, and detect, and respond. Uh, recover, we'll leave that alone for now. We're going to focus on those four. So identify. When we talk about identify in CSF as it relates to Infoblox, we're talking about our ability to understand what is on your network. Infoblox leverages our IPAM solution and application discovery. Now, we have to understand what is on our network from an asset perspective, but we also have to understand applications are running in our network. Now, I've been a part of some pretty public and costly breaches in my career. So knowing what assets are on your network and what applications are running doesn't just provide intel on a reactive scenario. So while we're dealing with a breach, having that information is crucial. However, right, it also helps an organization become more proactive, being aware, often being able to mitigate risks before they even happen. Identify is key when it comes to attacking risk in the right way when it comes to CSF. Touching on protect is, you know, how do we prevent an attack or, or limit the impact of one to our infrastructure? Now, there's a couple of different ways we can leverage Infoblox to do that. We can deploy Blocks One threat defense and set it up blocking. That's an, an immediate way to provide protection. We can leverage threat intelligence data exchange, or for a more common term that you're going to hear, TIED, to close some of those gaps and leverage intelligence throughout the entire security technology stack, enhancing protection and reducing false positives. We can also leverage security integration strategies with Infoblox ecosystem. A lot of our strategists want our security technologies talking to each other because it's gonna create some efficiencies and create some abilities to provide stronger protection scenarios. Moving away from those siloed technologies and the idea of a single pane of glass, we can use Infoblox ecosystem to work directly with other technologies to provide stronger protections. Now, touching on detect, detect is obvious, but it's also a key aspect of a mature security program. More than just detection, but accurate and timely detection. So we use our intelligence baked into Blocks One threat defense. And not only are we building robust detection models, we're building accurate ones. So we're focused on real threats. Low false positive rates, high accuracy rates is our mission. When I get asked about our ability to detect so well, 
The answer is simple, right? Infoblox has spent our entire life on DNS, our entire lifeblood, ever our history has always been focused on DNS. So our security teams, our data scientists, our threat intelligence teams, they're all building detection models focused on DNS. We can be much more precise because we're not using a big brush to cover a lot of ground. We're solely focused on DNS. And that's why we have such a low false positive rate and why we are so accurate. We're not trying to solve the world's problems. We're not trying to solve the technology stack's entire problem set using intelligence. We're focused on what we do best, DNS. And then we can touch on respond. What can InfoBlocks do to respond to an incident? Well, the most basic way is we can block it with Blocks 1 Threat Defense. That's one way to comply with the, with the respond aspect of CSF. We can stop the attack on its tracks. That's one way to respond. We can also leverage our API integrations with ecosystem to work directly with the rest of the technologies based on your design to act. So however you architect your infrastructure, however policies and processes that you have in place that are gonna to respond to specific threats, you can use our detection models and our intelligence and our API integrations with the rest of your security stack to create that response that you're looking for and use that contextual data and intelligence from DNS to create an accurate response, right? The power of ecosystem allows your teams to build responses throughout the technology stacks. So imagine being able to tie directly to your firewalls or tie directly to your vulnerability scanners. The entire security stack gives up, becomes an open door to you. We can improve those technologies' ability to respond with ecosystem while creating efficiencies for the rest of the security stack with Blocks 1 Threat Defense by blocking them before they even get a chance to even process it. Imagine your firewall not having to process something because Blocks 1 Threat Defense stopped it already. Take that at scale, and now your firewall has improved its efficiencies tenfold. This is what we do in a respond model to help create those efficiencies. When we look at technologies through the lens of compliance, we start to recognize and see how these technologies are designed to fill frameworks and guidelines that are important to our customers and their ultimate goals when it comes to compliance and security. Next, we'll touch on the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, or FedRAMP. Now, I have a lot of experience with FedRAMP, so I've been around the block a few times. If you're a cloud service provider or, or what they refer to as a CSP, and you've tried working directly with the federal government, specifically the civilian agency side of the federal government, you know exactly what FedRAMP is. And if you haven't, well, it is the federal government's compliance program that standardizes the approach to assessment, authorization, and continuous monitoring for cloud products and services. That's a really long way of saying the very short way of, it's the authorization required to process federal data. So if you plan on processing federal data, specific classes of federal data, you will need a FedRAMP authorization if you're working directly with a civilian federal, federal agency. And that authorization will have to match their requirements. It's how you end up with a FedRAMP moderator or a FedRAMP high. Now, it's exciting times for the InfoBlox Threat Intelligence and Security Product, Blocks One Threat Defense. Now, Blocks One Threat Defense recently achieved the US government's FedRAMP moderate authorization. It became the first SaaS platform with a FedRAMP authorization that provides security and intelligence for DNS. Now, that gives our customers that work directly with the U.S. government and our U.S. government customers the ability to protect their DNS. Now, why is that important? It's important for a number of reasons, right? So the obvious one is that if you're working directly with a federal government and part of that project, the agency is requiring an adherence to the CISA Emergency Directive 1901 that outlines protective DNS, InfoBlox Blocks One Threat Defense has a FedRAMP moderate authorization or ATO or authority to operate. That is one less technology in your project requirements that you have to worry about that has to come with an ATO. Now, we have to remember whether it's InfoBlox selling directly to the federal government or another cloud service provider or CSP selling to the federal government, every piece of technology that's going to touch that government data will have to have an authorization that matches that requirement. So this matters to those agencies or those customers that are working directly with federal government, civilian agencies, because everything that touches that data has to have that authorization 
So if you have an entire program that you're offering, and part of that requirement is that emergency directive from CISA, we can help we can help to get you to close that gap and solve that problem for you without you having to create any exceptions or delay your project or cause any delays in ROI to that specific project. Now, FedRAMP is important to both our customers because it demonstrates InfoBlock's consistency in evaluating and monitoring secu security. Now, attaining a FedRAMP authorization isn't just about technology, right? It's about process and policy. It's dynamically changes the entire organization to have more mature information security program. Now, there are only 300 or 13 or so products or services that have an ATO. Now, mind you, there's several companies that offer several different products and services. So the number of organizations that have an ATO is even smaller. Now, that should demonstrate to you how many companies actually have an ATO and how hard it is to attain that ATO. It's not something that's easily done. So why is that important to someone that isn't the federal government? I can hear it now. I'm not the federal government. Why would I care? This isn't something that applies directly to me. Well, it does. In today's supply chain, security management is top of mind. The climate today and keeping an eye on who you're buying from, where your data is at, if that company has the ability to be breached, is that company taking your data seriously? It is top of mind and it is important. We've seen day in and day out where companies are buying products or buying cloud services and then all of a sudden that company gets breached and they didn't take security as seriously as they should have. When you have a FedRAMP ATO like we do, you're ensuring that the cloud security products and services are protecting that data is just as important to them as it is to you. We take it seriously. And a lot of these organizations today and a lot of our customers today find it just as important that the vendor that they choose as a cloud service is protecting their data and taking their data as important to them as it is to themselves. So it isn't just about them protecting their data. It's about those vendors protecting that customer data as well. So that our FedRAMP authorization conveys to our customers that we will protect their data because we're adhering to some of the most stringent requirements that, that exist today in our society. Now, ISO 27001, like I said, we're not going to dive all the way into ISO. It's, it's a deep pool to swim in, but we're going to touch on a couple of aspects of it. Specifically, we're going to touch on asset management. So part of adhering to the compliance standards is having the tools and controls in place that give you the visibility, accountability, and reportability on the compliance requirements themselves. We have to be able to adhere, but be able to provide proof to those requirements, right? So governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC, and security want to minimize the amount of time we spend on the management and reporting of these requirements. Our SOC wants to get back to what they love to do as quickly as possible. Now, as a CISO, as a head of global security operations centers, there's been multiple places where I've been tasked with adhering or auditing or getting in line with a broad assortment of different compliance standards. And I can tell you from personal experience and professional experience, I've never walked in a security operations center and told everyone in the security operations center that GRC is getting ready to ramp up for an audit, whether that's ISO or SOC 2, Type 2, whatever compliance standard it is no one in the room has gotten excited about it. And oftentimes what it leads to is me having to, or leaders within the security operations center, having to go delegate down evidence collection or configuration changes or change policy reviews for specific standards. It's not fun. It's not something they want to spend time in. We'll touch on asset management because it's one that everyone can identify with. If you're working through ISO and you have an asset management program, Part of that is being able to identify all of the assets within your infrastructure. Now, if you can imagine the ton of different controls that you have to go through to figure that out. Now, if you're leveraging the InfoBlox IPAM solution, it becomes pretty easy to tell what's in your infrastructure because you have a list of it through IPAM. It becomes pretty easy to provide that evidence out. Now, asset management isn't just about the number of assets on the network. It's about the applications running in the network. It becomes both. So ISO wants you to provide evidence to what applications are being ran within the environment. We use application discovery to map that out. So because the applications themselves eventually have to call home, they do so through DNS. 
it gives us a more holistic view of the applications that are actually running them in the environment. And because of the way the product is designed and how Infobox thinks about our product releases and how our product should function, we don't just think about it from a security or IT perspective, we think about it from a compliance and GRC perspective. That application list becomes easily exported and easily sent over to GRC. We circle back to what the SOC likes to do for fun. This enables the SOC analysts to then provide that evidence rather quickly as an export, send that over to the parties that need to know, whether that be GRC or the auditor themselves, and then get back to what they were doing. This is a very powerful and very quick, efficient way of solving some of the most hard problems and technical problems that we run into in a SOC. It's as hard as going into five or six different technologies, screenshotting and exporting and doing all that stuff that can consume hours. So we've taken the approach with application discovery that you can do so in minutes. InfoBlocks Asset Management Application Discovery gives firsthand visibility to your assets and your applications in use. It does so accurately because it's using DNS. Now, I hope that creates some efficiencies within your environment. And I hope that gives some visibility to what we do. Now, remember, what we think about from an InfoBlox perspective is never just about how IT can create efficiencies or how security can create efficiencies. We think about it from how compliance can create efficiencies. I thank you for your time today. And I hope when you walk away from this demonstration, you understand how we see things from our product standpoint and how those products can map directly back to your environment and your initiatives within your organization. Remembering your takeaway from Infobox isn't just our products, but our approach. Oftentimes in security, we get bogged down with the most important thing that we think about, security. We often forget about their compliance and GRC aspect of things. Infoblox, we don't. We think about IT and how we can create efficiencies for them how we can create products that do better. For security, we've used products and intelligence that will help secure our infrastructures, our customers' infrastructures in a meaningful way. We align those back to how those efficiencies create ROI within those environments. And lastly, we think about how our products and our technologies work directly with compliance. So not only do our customers have to secure things, we have to comply with certain compliance standards, whether that be the federal government who whatever civilian agency is asking, do you have your ATO? Yes, Infoblox does. They have a moderate ATO. To your GRC team asking you, can you capture the evidence itself for ISO 27001 audit for all the assets that we have running in our environment? Because asset management dictates it. And as a head of a security operations center using the Infoblox product suite, I can say, yes, I'll have that to you in 30 minutes. I hope you take away a lot from this. I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thank you.